بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عسى الله أن يجعل بينكم وبين الذين عاديتم منهم مودة والله قدير والله غفور رحيم وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم اللهم لا عيش إلا عيش الآخرة فاغفر الأنصار والمهاجرة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, respected brothers, elders, mothers and sisters, it is a basic fact of life that nothing can be obtained in this material world without payment. There is indeed a price to every article. How common a slogan we chant, nothing is for mahala. Whether you pay in cash or kind, one has to pay. Logically speaking, every buyer wants to give less and secure more. And if it's returned or reversed rather, he gives more and he receives less, then he says, I've burnt my fingers. Not again, I learned my lesson. It's rather tragic, unfortunate, that we do not apply this very same principle, this theory, when it comes to the aspect of sin and vice and transgression. By Allah, the price a sinner pays to sustain one sin, whether it's a woman or a drug or a gambling habit or whatever the nature of the crime is, I swear by Allah in whose control is my life, the price he pays is far greater than the supposed pleasure he receives. There's no pleasure. The supposed, the alleged, the assumed pleasure. The first price every sinner pays, with no exception, he has to permanently bid farewell to happiness from his life. Any man in sin, and if you have a different theory, I will step off this member. Any man in sin, and let me not mince my words, he will have a throw, he will have a kick, he'll have an excitement. He will have a buzz, but he won't have happiness and bliss. Let's not mince our words. When he pops the pill, when he goes online, when he pulls the machines, when he indulges in haram, for the moment he'll get a thrill. He will get an excitement, and that will give him a bit of a buzz and an excitement. But happiness in the meaning of happiness will be unheard of in his life. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahmatullah the great scholar, the second Umar, it's the day of Eid. He sees his son clad in a simple garb, while the general youth of the community are clad in exclusive dress. As a father, it moves him to tears. So the son sees the father and he says, Dad, my yubkik, oh my father, what makes you cry? It's a topic of its own to reflect over the amazing interaction that father and son used to have in the past. Amr ibn As radiyallahu anhu, Fatiha Misr, the conqueror of Egypt. He's in the throes of death. His son Abdullah is at his bedside. The father slips into a coma. He becomes conscious. He slips into a coma. He becomes conscious. The son seizes the opportunity. He nudges his dad. He said, Dad, without being insensitive to your trauma, once you pass away, you're gone. None will able to describe to me the agony of death. If I'm not asking too much of you while you're experiencing, can you relate it to me also? Oh, my dad, while you're taking your last breath, I sympathize with your pain and your agony, but it's an occasion for me to reflect as well. If it's not too cumbersome and it's not too colossal on you and it's not a big ask, please share with me. I can sympathize as well, reflect over the day this would face me. Sifli al maut So the dad says, that's fine, my son. Allahu Akbar. What was the interaction? 
He says, كَأَنَّ جِبَالَ الدُّنْيَا فَوْقَ صَدْرِي كَأَنَّ جِبَالَ الدُّنْيَا فَوْقَ صَدْرِي My son, understand it like this, for the moment I feel as if the mountains of the entire world are exclusively resting on the chest and the bosom of your father. That is why one great scholar was asked, why don't you speak about something contemporary? You need to be relevant with the time. He said, there's nothing more contemporary than death. There's nothing more relevant than death. كَأَنَّ جِبَالَ الدُّنْيَا فَوْقَ صَدْرِي As if the mountains of the entire world are resting on my shoulders. And then he slips into a coma again. Imagine the prolonged silence and the panic in that son's heart. What's happened? Is my dad there? Is there a pulse? Is he breathing? Is he gone? Again, he slips out. This is, this is a degree of consciousness. He said, Dad, you, you were saying, could you kindly complete that sentence? And my son, bearing in mind that the mountains of the entire world are on my chest, I'm trying to breathe from the eye of a needle. I'm trying to breathe from the eye of a needle. وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمَسَاقِ وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمَسَاقِ Those that have seen a person die in the Qur'an draws the picture. In the intensity of agony, the calf of one leg envelopes onto the other. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومَ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْذُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ If you claim that you have power and might, and there is no retribution post-death, then here is the soul departing. The Qur'an challenges you. تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Halt the departing soul. These are the words of the Qur'an. Halt the departing soul and say, hang on. Just, just, just stay where you are. تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ If you believe there's no retribution, then do what you can. I'm afraid you have to watch and observe, and it takes its cause, and that which is meant to happen, happens. So this was the dialogue between Abdullah ibn Amr, ibn As, and his father, رضي الله عنهما, and in this way the father passes away. Umar ibn Abdulaziz, rahmatullah alayhi, sees his son wearing a torn, tattered, patched, shirt when everybody is clad in exclusive garments. So he cries. The son says, Dad, what makes you cry? He said, أَخْشَى أَنْ يَنْكَسِرَ قَلْبُكَ يَوْمَ الْعِيدِ إِذْ رَآكَ الصِّبْيَانُ بِهَذَا الْقَمِيسِ الْخَلِقِ My son, it hurts me. I don't have the financial muscle. I don't have the economic drive. I couldn't clear you with which other parents gave their children. And now to see that you singled out, I just hope you don't, you are not victimized, you're not marginalized. You're not insulted because of your garb, because of your dress. Really, when parents were like this, then children gave answers like this year. Yesterday I was speaking and I said, the, the, the pain of an average father today. Occasionally in the late hours of the night, early hours of the morning, you get up either for the call of nature, or perhaps the alarm got triggered, or there was some noise or some peculiar sound, and you get up and you see the light in your daughter's room is on, and you see the light in your son's room is on. How nice it would have been when you knock on the door and you open and you find your son in such dying prostration. How nice it would have been when you get in your son's room, the Qur'an is before him. But unless the painful, the painful, the appalling sight is, one is on the net, one is earphones, one is busy on the phone, he snubs you, he doesn't have any regard or respect for you. With our palatial homes, we've become bereft of happiness and bliss, and that has become the misery in the heart of affluence. This has become the pain of the average man, sharing a common roof, living an independent life. Sharing a common roof, living an independent life. The son says, oh my dad, إِنَّمَا يَنْكَسِرُ قَلْبُ مَنْ أَعْدَمَهُ اللَّهُ رِضَاهُ أَوْ عَقَّ أُمَّهُ أَوْ أَبَاهُ وَإِنِّي لَأَرْجُوا أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ رَاضٍ عَنِّي بِرِضَاكُ Oh my dad, can I redefine depression? Can I redefine misery? Misery was never meant for the man who wore old clothes. But misery is inseparable from the man who disobeys Allah. 
Misery is inseparable. You can fly business class, you can stay five-star hotel. If you have an illicit relation, my brother, you'll be sitting in your house with your family in your luxury. Allah's qasam, when people will sleep, you'll be up. When people are up, you'll be sleeping. Your night will be day, your day will be night, your life will be abnormal. This is inevitable. This is the price. So the first price every sinner pays, I said, it's the, it's the mind, the business mind. Benefit versus harm. What am I getting? What am I selling? What am I making? I'm not even talking of the monetary connotations of price. That has its fair share. To sustain one drug, to sustain, one person was telling me, he said, that an addict confides in his drug. Addict confides in his drug. When he's depressed, he pops a pill. When he's happy, he pops a pill. And when he wants a pill and he's in an average mood, he provokes a situation to justify its consumption. So he deliberately creates a fight. So it can take him into a depression mode and then he can escape from the crisis. Ibn Qudama rahmatullah alayhi has made mention of the narration in his kitab, Kitab al on page 162. Just as the one who disobeys Allah, depression is inseparable. The one who obeys Allah, bliss and happiness is, is a given. It's an accepted thing. It's by the way. Like I said, we're not mincing our words. Excitement, thrill and buzz, sin will give you for the moment. For the moment it will kick you. You'll, you'll, feel, you'll feel high, you'll feel excited. You'll feel all, you know what? She gave you a warm smile, she gave you an embrace, she gave you a hug. But you'll come home, my brother, your beautiful, adorned wife, who is the mother of your children, who has been so kind and loyal and dutiful to you. She will clad and adorn herself. Allah will deprive your sight from pleasure when looking at your wife. Ibn Qudama rahmatullah alayhi says there was a person by the name of Mahdi. He spent his entire night in sin, vice, transgression. That was the manner in which he lived. His slave girl felt very hurt and concerned that my master mustn't die like this. So she applied her mind, she brought a flame. Zohar, Asar, Maghrib, no salah. By the time of Isha, she brought a burning live coal. فَوَدَعَتْهُ ala rijlayhi And she placed it on his leg. Fanzaja It gave him a shock, it burnt him and he moved. And he said, what is this? So she said, Jamratum min nari dunya fakayfa tasna'u bi nari al-akhirah. Jamratum min nari dunya fakayfa tasna'u bi nari al-akhirah. This is but a flame of this small world, which is minor in its nature, simple in its intensity. I'm just giving you a reminder what would happen when the flames of hell are hurled towards you. إِنَّهَا تَرْمِي بِشَرَرٍ كَالْقَصْرِ كَأَنَّهُ جِمَالَةٌ صُفْرٍ إِنَّهَا تَرْمِي بِشَرَرٍ كَالْقَصْرِ كَأَنَّهُ جِمَالَةٌ صُفْرٍ Verily hell will hurl sparks to you the size of palaces. These are the words of the Qur'an. الَّذِي يَصْلَ النَّارَ الْكُبْرَى Who will be subjected to the supreme fire? The supreme fire. The world is simple and basic. It hit home. He realized the message. It shook the life out of him. He stood up. He said, I need to draw a line and I need to make a change in my life. He performed his salah, gave up his life of, of affluence, his flamboyant lifestyle. His life of indulgence and transgression and infidelity and disloyalty. So one day Sufyan ibn Uyayna, wa huwa muhaddith al-haram al-makki, the great giant, the muhaddith, and Fudayl ibn Ayyad. Fudayl ibn Ayyad used to say, Inni la a'asi allaha fa'ara thalika fi khuluqi imra'ati wa khadimati wa himari. Sometimes when I disobey Allah, instantly I see my wife disobeying me, my servant rebelling against me, and even my conveyance going against me. Sometimes when I disobey Allah, immediately I see the change, the attitude. So, so uh, Sufyan ibn Uyayna came to visit him. He was a great muhaddith. Sufyan ibn Uyayna rahmatullah said to him, 
انه لم يدع احد لله شيئا الا عوذه الله خيرا منه فما عوذك مما تركت له it is the system of allah that whenever any person forsakes something for the pleasure of allah and that's my theme for today and that's my message muster the courage do the brave thing and that will cost you much less that will cost you much less in addition to the multiple benefits and boons and favors you will receive any person who forsakes anything for the pleasure of allah it is the system of allah it is the pattern of allah it is the nature of allah that allah will replace and substitute him with something more wholesome and better so you've made the bold step in your life you've given up woman and wine sin and vice what has allah replaced this with what has allah replaced this with he said arrida bima ana fihi arrida bima ana fihi i lived a sinful affluent life and i was a miserable depressed man i now have embraced a pious obedient life i live a lavish life rather i live the lavish life a lavish sinful life extravagant the best of all but indulging in sin and then i gave up that life and now i'm living simple in the obedience of allah in my wealth and sin i was miserable and depressed in my simplicity and obedience i'm happy and satisfied arrida bima ana fihi now let's just develop on these words of sufyan ibn uyayna let's let's unpack that let's drive that let's elucidate that what did he say innahu lam yada ahadun lillahi shay'an whoever forsakes a sin for the pleasure of allah and each man can do soul searching and he knows and allah knows which sin has has tempered his relation with allah has denied him the proximity of allah has denied him the closeness of allah whoever will abandon that sin will gain something greater more superior ibn jawzi rahmatullah alayhi writes in his famous kitab man taraka lillahi shay'an awwadahu allah khayran minhu now we cite few examples to put a practical dimension to the theory to put a practical dimension to the theory whoever forsakes something for the pleasure of allah allah will give him better كما ترك سيدنا يوسف عليه السلام امرأة العزيز واختار السجن على الفاحشة فعوذه الله أن مكنه في الأرض يتبوأ منها حيث يشاء سيدنا يوسف did not subject or سيدنا يوسف did not succumb to the provocation and the seduction of that woman and he opted for the jail and the cell over sin and immorality and he was restricted to the confinement of a cell and a jail he persevered but he did not succumb to vice and sin fa'awwadahu allah an makkanahu fil ard allah gave him a replacement and a substitute that allah freed him from the jail and allah elevated him to the throne of egypt yatabawwa minha haythu yasha so here is the challenge my brother you succumb to that woman you get the thrill of the moment your marriage goes your iman goes your wealth goes your children go it's your choice and it's your call are you ready to forsake and allow your palace to crumble your hopes to collapse your spirituality to cave in for that one pill for that one machine for that one glance for that one night make the call this is the night this is the day rest assured on this very blessed momentous occasion the adulterer is denied pardon on this day also yes if he chooses to abandon adultery the doors of allah are open someone said it beautifully what is 15 shaaban ramadan we are at the threshold of ramadan that will be a thorough wash 15 shaaban is a pre wash you know you have the stubborn stains on the cloth so they clean you see the woman cleaning the collar first and then they sprain whatever they sprain they giving it the pre wash and then there's a the thorough rinse that happens in the machine or the domestic or whatever it is this is a pre wash so that ramadan can give me that full clean so sayyidina yusuf did not succumb allah gave him the empire of egypt that's not all what did allah do wa adhalla lahu al aziza wa imra'atahu allah brought that very woman at his feet kneeling in an apology wa aziz and the manasta واقرت المراه واقرت المراه والنسوه ببراءته 
and the woman, the woman in say, the woman in discussion, she concedes her guilt, and the general woman of Egypt testify to the to the modesty and the bashfulness of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. So he persevered. It was a challenging moment. It was a daunting moment. I will elaborate how the circumstances around him were. You know, you, you say, now brother, how can you... And my boss's wife, I feel so awkward. Take it easy, my brother. Are you appeasing your ego? Are you satisfying your own desire? Or you just smoke screening? He said, وَأَقَرَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ وَالنِّسْوَةُ بِبَرَاءَتِهِ the woman and the general woman testify to the innocence of Yusuf alayhi salam. And these are the amazing words of Ibn Jawzi rahmatullah alayhi. وَهَذِهِ سُنَّتُهُ تَعَالَى حَدِيثًا وَقَدِيمًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And this system of Allah remains not exclusive for Yusuf, for anyone and everyone till Qiyamah. Try it and see how Allah will replace for you. Aisha radiyallahu anha said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ما أرى ربك إلا يسارع في هواك. Oh my Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I've made an observation in your life. Your Allah is so passionate to hasten in fulfilling every desire of yours. Your Allah is so passionate to accommodate the minor details of your life. And his uncle Abu Talib said to him, ما أرى ربك إلا يطيعك. Oh my nephew, I see your Allah obeys you. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh my uncle, you also obey my Allah, and my Allah will also obey you. Abu Talib said, Ma ara rabbak illa yuti'uk. I see your Allah, he obeys you. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, But I'm not the ex- I don't have an exclusive membership in this year. I don't have an ex- I don't have a monopoly over this. I don't have a monopoly. Wa anta ya am. لو أطعت ربي أطاعك وأنت يا عم لو أطعت ربي أطاعك Oh my uncle, go for it. You obey my Allah and see how my Allah obeys you. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah ta'ala sent wahi to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam Ya Musa, kun kama uridu akun laka kama turid Musa, do as I instruct and I will do as you request. Musa, do as I instruct and I will do as you request. That's the first incident. وَهَذِهِ سُنَّتُهُ تَعَالَى حَدِيثًا وَقَدِيمًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَمَّا عَقَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ بْنُ دَاوُودَ الْخَيْلَ الَّتِي شَغَلَتْهُ عَنْ صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ حَتَّى غَابَتِ الشَّمْسُ سَخَّرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ الْرِيحِ يَسِيرُ عَلَى مَتَنِهَا حَيْثُ أَرَادْ Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam was engaged in the preparation of his horses which the Qur'an says they were of the best of breed, they were wonderful, they were exclusive. Any man who's into horses will understand the pride and the greatness. I was mentioned it in one of my talks, once we were flying back from Holland, and I went at the back of the aircraft to perform salah, and I see this gentleman clad in a rather different uniform, not part of the cabin crew, not a regular passenger. We got chatting, and I asked him, what are you here and what are you doing? He said, I'm an animal attendant. I said, and what you doing here at 11,000, you know, kilometer, 35,000 feet above sea level? He says, we're carrying four horses on board, so I'm just attending to them. I said, what? He said, yes, we have carrying four horses. There's a gentleman in the business class, and we're flying his horses. So I said, if you'll be kind enough, can I go at the back and can I have a look at it? He said, please come. And subhanallah, I went there and I said, ya Allah, what intellect Allah has given man? What intellect Allah has given in four horses respectively in their stable with their hay and their water. And he said, we talk of the flying horse and burak and here's horses flying with us here on board. So Suleiman al was preparing his horses. He was occupied. And these horses to be used in the path of Allah. In the interim, the sun tipped on the western horizon. Asr Salah either went into makru or became, uh, you know, qada. The preferred verdict is it became makru. Some say it wasn't even the asr salah. It was an optional prayer which he used to religiously perform. But it got compromised due to his engagement in something which also had a no- noble motive. It was for religious reasons. But we have to prioritize. I cannot be performing, reciting Quran at the time of salah. At the time of salah, the call is on salah. He realized that this has somehow become a hindrance to me complying to the order of Allah. 
فقال إني أحببت حب الخير عن ذكر ربي حتى توارت بالحجاب ردوها علي فطفق مسحا بالسوق والأعناق He said, no, no, we cannot keep these horses. They have become an obstacle in the obedience of Allah. Slaughter them all. Distribute the meat amongst the poor. We will keep clean from anything that, that hinders our relation with Allah. When he parted with that horses and the strength and the might and the authority and the dominion that Allah had given him, سَخَّرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ الْرِّيَاحِ يَسِيرُ عَلَى مَتَنِهَا حَيْثُ أَرَادُ Immediately Allah substituted. Allah said, you gave up that. We've now given you access to the winds. The winds are at your command. You direct them, you fly them, you move. وَلِسُلَيْمَانَ الرِّيحَ غُدُوُّهَا شَهْرٌ وَرَوَاحُهَا شَهْرٌ وَلِسُلَيْمَانَ الرِّيحَ غُدُوُّهَا شَهْرٌ وَرَوَاحُهَا شَهْرٌ The Qur'an said that Sayyidina Sulaiman would cover the journey of two months in one day. One of my scholars used to say, flyingsulaiman.com Air Sulaiman, direct, way to Damascus. إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا This is the system of Allah. You give up that haram, my brother, and see what comes your way. When you resist that haram, your nafs will throw a tantrum. That's to happen. Your nafs will throw a tantrum. One great scholar, Mawlana Muhammad Yusuf, the author of Hayat al-Sahaba, he said, the soul and the body is like the horseman and the horse. When you get onto the back and you saddle up, then the horse will try and ascertain the confidence level of the rider. And the the horse will jostle, it will turn. Either you show weakness and you succumb, then you're a dummy on the back of that horse and that animal rides you. And either you hold and you resist the temptation and you say, I will hold and I am in grip and I am in authority and I will pull the shots. Then the Quran says, this horse who is ready to go in the ferocious battle, take you deep in, it's yours now. We've made this animal kingdom subservient to the most junior of creatures in, in man. You hold them, you ride them, you slaughter them, you eat them, it's your choice. But if you succumb, then you're a dummy and that horse rides you. Your nafs will throw a tantrum. There will be an urge, there will be a crave. You'll go to that phone, you'll go on that net, you'll go past that casino, you'll pick up that pill. This is the time to resist. Remember my brother, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَارَقْتَهُ عِوَضٌ وَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ إِنْ فَارَقْتَهُ مِنْ عِوَضٍ If you lose anything, we can find you an alternative. But oh boy, oh boy, if you lose your Allah, you're a lost man. You're a lost man. You broke up with this girl, we'll find you something. You gave up this drug, we'll give you alternative halals and put you onto it, introduce you to halal. You gave up sin, we will introduce you to halal. But oh boy, oh boy, if you have abandoned your Allah, I'm afraid there's no luck for you. وَلَمَّا تَرَكَ الْمُهَاجِرُونَ دِيَارَهُمْ لِلَّهِ وَأَوْطَانَهُمْ أَلَّتِي هِيَ أَحَبُّ شَيْءٍ إِلَيْهِمْ أَعَاذَهُمُ اللَّهُ أَنْ فَتَحَ عَلَيْهِمْ الدُّنْيَا وَمَلَّكَهُمْ شَرْقَ الْأَرْضِ وَغَرْبَهَا When the muhajirin had forsaken their native land and they were compelled to leave their native land for the preservation of the iman. And it's not an easy call to leave. We consciously relocate and yet it's so daunting. We are not expelled. We are not banished. We are not driven. People consciously relocate and yet they have second thoughts. Did I make the right choice or not? I feel, you know, I often say I've met many a people abroad and many people tell me, so, you know, when you go overseas and you leave your country, you even miss the people in South Africa you don't talk to. That one uncle in the masjid, very snobby, he's very haughty, but you think of him now, you know. You consciously relocate and you have second thoughts. They were driven out of their homes. وَلَمَّا تَرَكَ الْمُهَاجِرُونَ دِيَارَهُمْ لِلَّهِ وَأَوْطَانَهُمْ And their abodes and their locations. 
أعاذهم الله أن فتح عليهم الدنيا They left on Mecca Allah opened the whole world to them وملكهم شرق الأرض وغربها Allah gave them the east and the west الذين إن مكناهم في الأرض الذين إن مكناهم في الأرض أقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأمروا بالمعروف ونهوا عن المنكر ولله عاقبة الأمور 17 جو سورة حج Allah praises the Sahaba Those people if ever I give them dominion and empire If I give them authority and power They will not exploit and abuse They will establish my obedience They will bring about the life of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu used to say, Thana'un qabla bala'in. Allah is paying tribute to us before testing us. Allah is acknowledging us before subjecting us. It, haven't, it hasn't yet come in our feet, yet Allah is paying tribute to us. Allah opened the east and the west. The scholars say, وَكَذَلِكَ السَّارِقْ لَوْ تَرَكَ سَرَقَةَ الْمَالِ لَآتَاهُ اللَّهُ مِثْلَهُ حَلَالًا If a thief abandons the habit of stealing, Allah will give him that same through halal and lawful. He's not going to make anything extra by speaking a lie. البيعان بالخيار ما لم يتفرقا فإن صدقا وبينا بورك لهما في بيعهما وإن كذبا وكتما محقت بركة بيعهما بخاري الشريف حبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم said buyer and seller are at liberty as long as they're honest, they're transparent they are compliant then Allah's hand is over that deal they, it's blessed, it has بركة in it it has goodness in it وإن كذبا وكتما but they distort, they lie they indulge in fraudulent deals the grey market, the black market, whatever it is, muhiqat barkatu bay'ihima, that transaction is bereft of goodness. It's devoid of virtue. You'll make that money, that money won't bring happiness to you. Then we wonder of the sicknesses that has plagued the world. I say this and I repeat it. Leave alone the sicknesses that can justify depression. The fear of not becoming a victim to any sickness is depression in the life of every man today. They broke in two homes in the street. The, the following nights, who's more restless? Those where they burgled or the others? The others are more restless. Three people passed away, Malakul Mot is doing his rounds. There's no way to escape. The only way to come back is the deen of Allah. وَكَذَلِكَ الزَّانِي لَوْ تَرَكَ رُكُوبَ ذَلِكَ الْفَرَجْ حَرَامًا لِلَّهِ لَأَثَابَهُ اللَّهُ بِرُكُوبِهِ أَوْ رُكُوبِ مَا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ حَلَالًا If an adulterer abstains, and he exercises, he restrains himself, Allah will give him that very same woman through lawful means, or if she's not meant for him, Allah will give him something better, but that which is legitimate and wholesome. The Prophet ﷺ said, النَّذْرُ فِي مَحَاسِنِ الْمَرْأَةِ To stare at the beauty of a woman. Is undoubtedly an arrow from the poisonous arrows of the devil. Man a'rad an dhalik al-sahmi a'qabahu Allahu ibadatan tasurruhu. He who will restrain that glance, he who will discipline himself, he who will bring modesty in himself, Allah promises to substitute, to replace, to follow up by ibadat that will give him a physical ecstasy, that will give him a pleasure. You see, you and I haven't been introduced, so we cannot relate and identify with it. Those who've tasted it, they will never leave it because it's wholesome and it's pure. It's awesome. It's all embracing. So, this one young man was walking in the dead of night and his gaze falls on a beautiful woman. In the dead of night, you cannot see much, but unfortunately your eyes are bright enough to see woman. You know, a person says, well, I got a bad memory, man. Then next minute he greets someone, who's that? We were in school about 30 years ago. <laughs> Nowadays I call it selected Alzheimer's. <laughs> selected Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, loss of memory, but selected Alzheimer's. I forget this, I forget that, but you know, 30 years ago, what a memory. She was in grade 3 with you, she's evolved, she's become a mother, she's grown up. But Allahu Akbar, brilliant is my brother, whatever you want to do, whatever you... They say whatever you give value to, increases in value in your eyes. Whatever you give value to, increases in value in your eyes. So anyway, he looks at this woman, he's attracted to her, magnetically drawn towards her. I don't have to elaborate on that. So he tries to seduce her. So she says, أَمَا كَانَ لَكَ زَاجِرٌ مِّنْ عَقْلٍ إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكَ نَاهٍ عَنْ دِينٍ 
Brother, if there's, any, there's nobody here physically to prohibit you, at least your intellect and your iman should prevent you. So I told her, sister, don't get all that serious. Wallahi ma yarana illa al-kawakib. It's a bright night, it's a moonlit night. We only exposed to the stars, there's nothing more. She said, فَأَيْنَ مُكَوْكِبُهَا فَأَيْنَ مُكَوْكِبُهَا You say only the stars are overlooking us? Where, where is the creator of the stars? Where can he disappear? فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ رَآ كَوْكَبًا قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي فَلَمَّا أَفَلَ قَالَ لَا أُحِبُّ الْآفِلِينَ When Ibrahim said, this is the star, he said, perhaps by your definition, by your flaw, Ibrahim Ali Sam didn't say, that's my Lord. A lot of people have this misconception. He came to establish Tawheed. How can a Nabi ever say this? This was a manner of Dawud that he engaged in. By your assumption, can I call the star a god and a deity? Okay, let's go for it. But when the star disappeared, he said, I'm not comfortable with an Allah who appears and disappears. I told you that guy, he made dua for someone. He said, may Allah give you a wife like the moon. He said, now you can, you know, the connotations could be many. Are you saying bright? Are you saying full moon? He said, no, one who appears by night and disappears by day. <laughs> he said, every man's wife is a mistress, must for one year stress for the rest of his life. <laughs> the boy says, dad, what's the difference between mom's tears and wife's tears? He says, my boy, mom's tears hurts the heart. Wife's tears hurts the pocket. أَمَا كَانَ لَكَ زَاجِرٌ مِّنْ عَقْلٍ إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكَ نَاهٍ عَنْ دِينٍ Where is your Allah? صَاحِبُ الشَّهْوَةِ عَبْدٌ صَاحِبُ الشَّهْوَةِ عَبْدٌ He who succumbs to his ego, he is the greatest slave shackled in the worst jail. Oh, listen to these words. He who succumbs to his ego, he is the worst prisoner. Shackled in the worst cell. And the day he musters the courage to overpower his ego, proportionately he will unshackle himself by his own doings. Sahibu shahwati abdun. The world has become slaves. Slaves of their ego. Slaves of their luxuries. Slaves of their comforts. I cannot sleep if I don't have this. I cannot eat if I don't have this. I cannot travel if I don't have this. I cannot clear myself if I don't have this. I cannot walk if I don't have this here. And then I call myself a free man. The day he overpowers it, that's the day he will become a king. You know, person drives a car. I say, no, once you drive this, then for, for the rest of your life, I don't want to mention another thing, I'm advertising for any cars. He said, no, my brother, drive this car. He says, no, no, I'm comfortable. And when he hops in here, oh, this is, the ambience is different. The theme is different. The, the feeling is different. The comfort is different. But I never knew this. My brother, I haven't introduced myself to speaking with my Allah. Ecstasy is when you put your head down in sajda and it's riveted and you cannot lift it. That's something else. That's something else. When you are gripped with the ground, and you're talking to your Allah, and you're crying to your Allah, and you can feel the presence of your Allah, and you can understand the closeness of your Allah. Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. Anyway, coming back to the incident of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, just to create the, 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 the atmosphere around him, to appreciate his levels of resistance, thereby understanding what Allah gave him accordingly. وَلَقَدْ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْ قِسَّةِ يُوسُفْ مِنَ الْعَفَافِ أَعْضَمُ مَا يَكُونَ أَعْضَمُ مَا يَكُونَ That which Allah has mentioned in the situation of Yusuf alayhi salam is the most amazing tale with regards to resisting temptation and succumbing to immorality. Why? فَإِنَّ الدَّاعِي أَلَّذِي إِجْتَمَعَ فِي حَقِّهِ لَمْ يَجْتَمِعْ فِي حَقِّ غَيْرِهِمْ I'm on focus on one thing and that is my topic is that we need to muster the courage to control the lustful soul. We have to govern it. We have to tame this, this wild soul of ours. In that lies our honor. Primarily about modesty and morality, because unfortunately that has become the order of the day. And in relation and in context with tonight, one of those that are deprived of forgiveness is those that are indulging in adultery, which we know how widespread it has become. Number one, in the case of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, 
فإنه عليه السلام كان شابا والشباب مركب الشهوة. Look at the situation of Yusuf alayhi salam. He was a young man. And youth is synonymous to lust. When a man in his young time, that is why there's more value to the ibadat in youth. Someone said it so beautifully, four things are great if anybody has it. But it's all the more excellent if four particular categories can embrace it and imbibe it. A, as-sakhawatu min al-aghniya'i hasanun, lakin fil fuqara'i ahsan. Generosity is wonderful if the wealthy have it, but it's superb if a poor man can spend. Number two, الحياء في الرجال حسن لكن في النساء أحسن الرجال في الحياء حسن لكن في النساء أحسن modesty if the man have it it's great but if the woman have it there can be nothing better than it العدل العدل من كل إنسان حسن لكن في القضاة أحسن if I am just and I am fair and I maintain equity it's great it's awesome it's brilliant it's wonderful it has its merit but if the governors and the rulers and those ruling, they have justice, then perhaps the empires won't be toppled as the autocrats have been toppled. You see the political landscape that is unfolding in the world. So if the governors can embrace justice, it's brilliant. If an old age, 70, 75 year old man repents, as long as he repents before his eyes close, it's early. But if a young man at the age of 18 tells that girl, that's it. Today I've drawn the line. Today I've made the choice. Today I have made a decision with my Allah. That's the end of music in my life. I will never pop that pill. I will never dine and wine. I will never club and pub. I will never go back. There can possibly be nothing greater. Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi makes mention of the narration. He says, حَدَّثَنَا هَيْثَمْ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا إِسْمَاعِيلُ بْنُ عَيَاشِ عَنْ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ بْنِ عَدِيءَ الْبَهْرَانِ عَنْ يَزِيدِ بْنِ مَيْسَرَ أَنَّهُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَقُولْ أَيُّهَا الشَّاب التارك شهوته لي المتبذل شبابه من أجلي أنت عندي كبعض ملائكتي إمام أحمد says I heard from هيثم he said I heard from إسماعيل بن عياش he said I heard from عبد الرحمن بن عدي البهراني he said I heard from يزيد بن ميسرة يزيد بن ميسرة said that Allah says oh young man whose youth is brimming if you choose to channel your youth in my obedience I promise you, you and my angels are then on par. And who are the angels? يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ لَا يَسْبِقُونَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ وَهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِ يَعْمَلُونَ Perpetually in the worship of Allah, this young man, if he objectively channels, and I am optimistic from my Allah, and I'm equally grateful to my Allah. I receive positive feedback with the grace of Allah from many a youth. And I say to you, those of you that are present, may Allah reward you for that. It's heartening. Sometimes it's a long day. It's a tiring day. It's a bit of an up and down day. And then you'll just receive a polite SMS from a young person. I heard this talk and I heard this point. And these are the vows of my life I've made and these are the changes. By Allah, there's nothing that can boost my spirit. And give me a greater excitement than to know Allah by His sheer mercy has used one word to turn the life of a young man. So Sayyidina Yusuf was a young man, hence his challenges were more daunting. Number two, كان عزبا ليس عنده ما يعوذه. He was single. When you're single, you don't have the halal option. So when you are married, then obviously you have a degree that there is a partner and that's the beauty of Islam. The modern, the western world is calling you outside. She has more to offer than what your wife has. And the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says, If you're attracted to a woman, فَإِنَّ مَعَهَا مِثْلَ الَّذِي مَعَهَا Come home immediately. These are the words, come home immediately. But to come home immediately, we need to change priorities in our life. We need to change priorities in our life. That is the time you come home, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Then consummate and share the bed with your wife, for verily she has nothing less than the woman outside. She has nothing less than the woman outside. فَإِنَّ مَعَهَا مِثْلَ الَّذِي مَعَهَا The Musnad Ahmad, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا لِلشَّيْطَانِ سِلَاحٌ أَبْلَغُ فِي الصَّالِحِينَ مِنَ النِّسَاء إِلَّا الْمُتَزَوِّجُونَ أُولَئِكَ, المبه... أولئك الْمُطَهَّرُونَ الْمُبَرَّؤُونَ مِنَ الْخَنَى The devil does not have a stronger weapon to infiltrate the ranks of the pious. We're not talking of the sinful. The noble, the pious, the religious, the Allah conscious, then the temptation and the plot of woman. 
These are the words of Musnad Ahmad, the hadith of Bukhari. ما رأيت من ناقصات عقل ودين أذهب للب الرجل الحازم من إحدى كنا. I've never seen anyone who has the ability to veil the sanity of a man like how one woman can. I've never seen anyone who has the ability to veil the sanity. Look at the words of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you unpack it and you analyze it from a grammatic perspective and the grammar, and you look at the the profoundness and the depth, it's just amazing how much emphasis has been made in the hadith. إلا المتزوجون with the exception of those that are married أولئك المطهرون المبرؤون من الخنا they are relatively safer. You know there was a time when this web of immorality had plagued us and we said we fear for the younger generation. By Allah the fear has now gone to a level higher. We fear for ourselves first. Then we can say we fear for the juniors. I am not safe my brother. People elder than me are not safe. People younger than me how possibly can they be safe? Huzaifa ibn Yaman radiyallahu anhu said, I foresee a time coming your way. La yanju ahadun illa man yad'u ka dua il gharik. None will be rescued from the tide of immorality in that era, but the person who passionately supplicates Allah, like how a drowning man will beg his Allah to reach the shore. That means my brother, a simple two rakat, with a basic dua, and I'm not trivializing that practice, is not going to be adequate against the tide. It's brilliant. What they say, you read in this, it's great. You take in this medicine, you'll have to up the dosage. You'll have to up the dosage because the tide is too strong. The challenge is too daunting. He said, you'll have to cry to Allah like a man drowning. A man is drowning. Say, Allah, please save me. Rahmatika ya rahman rahmin. What's happening, brother? Well, we made dua to Allah. It's in Allah's hands. It's in Allah's hand. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَى أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَى Who responds to the call of a desperate man? That is why the cry of a desperate man is answered. The Quran says, opening verses of the 20th juz, juz Surah Ankabut, Surah Qasas. Why? Because it comes out from the recesses of his heart. What did Huzaifa radiallahu anhu say? You'll only be rescued if you cry to Allah like how a drowning man cries. Any man who has children, especially teenagers, those going through adolescence, they say, what's the definition of adolescence? When your son stops asking you questions, you must know now he's in his teens, because now he knows the answers. As long as he's asking you, it's good. When he stops asking you, now he's dangerous, because now he knows the answers. I read a brilliant quote the other day. It's very easy to become a father, yet extremely difficult to be a father. It is very easy. Some people, on the lighter side, what they say? Children in the back seat cause accidents. And accidents in the back seat cause children. It's very easy to become a father, yet extremely difficult to be a father. My brother raising children today, I will have to drop my priorities. Leave your golf one Sunday. Spend time with your family. Fortunate is he whose children run into his arms even when his hands are empty. Fortunate is he. Today my child runs into my arms. It's an ATM machine. That's it. Any currency. I remember last year the family was with us, we were in Canada. So every day we're going for Tarawi, the kids are worth, Abu, $20 please. It's as simple as that. And yes, it's our duty and our love and our passion and our affection and we have to give and we have to share. But the duty of fatherhood is far greater than monetary exchanges. Far greater. So the second challenge in Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he was not married which made it greater, he didn't have a halal alternative. And I must remind you at this juncture, and if you don't know, let me seize the opportunity to inform you, they have remained a segment of the pious throughout history, that despite not getting married, they lived a more modest life than you and I can possibly live despite being married. There has been a segment in the pious, who despite not getting married, and that also due to the devotion to ibadah. 
there is a chapter, and this is an academic debate. It's an academic debate, but I'll simplify it. In essence, the debate is, that if a person can restrain himself, then amongst the jurists, Imam Shafi rahmatullah holds the view, it's better for him to devote his life towards ibadat and not to engage in marriage. While Imam Abu Hanifa holds a counter view, and he feels that a person should engage in marriage even if he has restraint amongst him, uh, in himself. So this is academic, and this is a debate amongst the scholars. And there has been those scholars... There is a kitab and I was reading it and it made my hair stand on ends. Why? As an individual perceived to be part of the fraternity of ulama. I don't have it perceived. And here you read the true ulama. The ulama rabbani. The kitab is Al-Ulama Al-Uzzab. Al-Ulama Al-Uzzab. A thick book like this. Shaykh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda rahimahullah who visited our shores in the early 90s and we had the good privilege to put our, our eyes on him. What a great giant in the field of hadith. Al-ulama al-uzzab, al-ladheena athar al-ilma ala al-ziwaj. Those scholars throughout history who consciously remained single and did not wed and get married due to their profound love for the knowledge of deen. And then he writes, and as I'm reading, I'm crying. I said, my Allah, these were people who truly embraced the title of ilm. These were people, just to share two, three with you. He writes, وَمِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْعُزَّابِ الْإِمَامُ الزَّاهِدِ الْعَابِدِ الْمُحَدِّثُ الْفَقِيِّ الْجَبَلُ الثِّقَةُ الرِّضَى عَدِيمُ النَّظِيرِ فِي عَصْرِهِ أَبُو النَّصْرِ بِشْرِ بْنِ حَارِثِ بْنِ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَانِ الْمَرْوَزِي ثُمَّ الْبَغْدَادِ وُلِدَ فِي مَرْوَى سَنَة 150 وَنَزَلَ بِبَغْدَادِ وَتَوَطَّنَهَا Who? الإمام الزاهد Epsilon from the world العابد a great worshiper الجبل الثقة الرضا a mountain in knowledge a giant المحدث a scholar of hadith الفقي a jurist عديم النظير في عصره unparalleled to him أبو نصر بشر ابن حارث ابن عبد الرحمن ابن مروزي he was born in a place called Marwa in the year 150 then he relocated to Baghdad and this was his seat of knowledge Ibrahim Harbi, one of the scholars of Baghdad, say, ما أخرجت بغداد أتم عقلا منه ولا أحفظ للسانه من بشر Baghdad in its history could not produce a greater scholar than Bishr Hafi rahmatullah alayhi. Nor could it produce someone who protected his tongue more than Bishr. ما عرف له غيبة لمسلم it cannot be said about him that he backbited one Muslim in his entire life. He did not backbite one Muslim in his entire life. كَأَنَّ فِي كُلِّ شَعْرَةٍ مِّنْهُ عَقْلًا It was as if every strand of his hair was an independent brain. لو قصي, this was because of the modesty they loved, the bashfulness. That is why one scholar said a very beautiful thing. And I identify with these sentiments. I identify with these sentiments. He said, we have the perception that when a child is young, it's easier to learn, easier to memorize the Quran, get the children to learn when they're young. He said, it's nothing to do with junior versus senior. It's rather to do with sinless nature versus sin. When he has not reached the age of puberty, his sins are not recorded. His mind is clean. It's not been documented. This mind can embrace the word of the Quran. Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are going to put on your chest a very colossal task. The hadith of Bukhari, Hubbiba ilayhi al khala'u. Hubbiba ilayhi al khala. Go to Mecca and go to, go to the, the cave of Hira and see at what a steep incline it is. And the Prophet ﷺ used to go there six months prior to his nabuwat. Seclusion, isolation was made beloved to him. And in that period, his heart was being prepared to embrace the colossal task of revelation. So it's not junior versus senior. It's the, clear, it's the, it's the cleanliness. It's the purity. So what he says, لَوْ قُسِمَ عَقْلُهُ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَغْدَادِ لَصَارُوا عُقَلَىٰ if you had to distribute the brains and the intelligence of Bishr Hafi over all the residents of Baghdad, every one of them would have become intelligent and it wouldn't have decreased his intelligence in any anyway. We wish we had people like that today.
Why? He devoted his whole life to deen. There was no scar, no blemish of immorality on his life. One other scholar he mentions, he mentions many just to share one to وَمِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْعُزَّابِ الْإِمَامُ الْمُجْتَهِدِ أَبُو جَعْفَرْ مُحَمَّدْ بْنُ جَرِيرَ الطَّبْرِ الْحُجَّةُ الْمُفَسِّرُ الْمُحَدِّثُ الْفَقِيهُ الْأُصُولِ النظار المقري اللغوي الأديب المحدث جامع العلوم ذو التصانيف أحد أئمة الدنيا علما ودينا وفقها وقد طبقت شهرته الآفاق Amongst these scholars was Abu Ja'far Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabri Any man who studies who's a scholar would know tafsir al-Tabri What a profound tafsir, what a great tafsir And it belongs to this very man who devoted his entire life Al-Faqih, a great jurist <laughs> Al-Mu'arikh, a great historian Al-Muqri, a great reciter Al-Lughawi, Al-Adib, Al-Sha'ir He was an authority in Arabic grammar Al-Nahwi, Al-Sha'ir, a great poet Al-Muhaqqiq, Al-Mudaqqiq He was a research person Jami' Al-Ulum, Wal-Tasanif He was a profile and a, a prolific author And he had compiled many a books Tabbaqat Shuhratuhu Al-Afaq he crossed the east and the west in his spread of knowledge. And the last person I will share with you in this regard. And just imagine these people. Allah speaks about Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam in the Quran. Hasur was an exclusive salient feature of Sayyidina Yahya that he never inclined to a woman in his entire life. He never ever inclined. Allah had divinely favored him. While every other Nabi had the, the human instinct of inclination, but divine protection, Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam was divinely protected in a different way, and this was his salient feature. He writes about, Imam Zahabi makes mention of it in his tazkira, under the writings of Abu Nasr al-Sijzi, who passed away in Makkah in the year 444. Al-Mutawaffa bi Makkah, sanata arba'a wa arba'a wa arba'een. Regarding him, Hafiz Abu Ishaq al-Habbal says, one day I was at the house of Abu Nasr al-Sijzi. Fatuq al-Bab, someone knocked on the door. Fakumtu, I stood up. Fafatahtu, I opened it. Faida imra'atun. Suddenly there's a beautiful woman there. She came inside. And she had a purse with her. She opened the purse and she took out a thousand dinars. Fawada'atu bayna yadayi shaykh. And she placed it before the shaykh. He said, mal maqsood? Sister, behind this, what are you aiming at? Nobody comes and gives you money just like that. We we'll say, Subhanallah, look at how Allah accepted my studies. Huh? Allah, Allah is great. Allah is great, my brother. This is a test upon you. How do you resist the temptation? Mal maqsood, sister, what's the intention? What's the motivation? That is a wajuni. Shaykh, I am impressed beyond description over the profoundness of your knowledge. And I really mean, I want proximity to you. And my aim is to draw from your fountain and your ocean of knowledge. And the only way we can possibly cross this forbidden line is that we engage in the lawful and the permissible and you wed me. He very modestly gazed down. He said, La hajat ali fi ziwaj. Sister, honestly, I don't have a need for nikah at this time. And you and I? What do you say? MBA. Married but available. <laughs> MBA degree. So MBA, my brother, married but available. She says, but my aim is to serve you. And obviously, I cannot possibly serve you. I cannot possibly serve you, so I want to wed you. She says, he says, La hajat ali fil khidmah. I don't have the need for anyone to serve me. I'm mobile, I'm active, I can do, attend to my chores. He said, please take your purse and kindly excuse. She takes the purse and she walks. We might, sister, can I walk you out? You might get lost here. You know what, uh, yeah, let me, let me, let me, can I show, you know what, here normally even the garment doesn't have network here. 